is how does a person then join a church? How does a person uh, be part of a church? And, you know, if you've been following along, obviously, with this sermon, you know, the, the answer is very simple. But let's just address a few things, a few misconceptions, I believe, about what we call church membership or joining a church. Because remember, a church is not a legal entity. It's not a members list that you're a part of because you can be on a members list but never be congregated or never assemble with that group of people. So a church is not in and of itself a members list. Now, why do churches keep a members list if that's not what makes you a member of the church? Well, generally, it's for you know, financial or asset reasons. You know, the government, there are legal reasons if you want to register as a charity or register as a corporation that you need to keep a members list. So they need to you know, have this members list in order to determine who's part of their church to prove to the government that there is this group of people that are part of that church. So it could be for assets, you know, financial reasons, you know, sometimes because members can vote and members can determine how money is spent, they need to have this list because they don't just want anybody to be able to, to vote and to determine what they do with the finances. So assets or financial reasons, legal or tax reasons, or maybe they might have a members list for certification reasons, right? Maybe there's a school where you need to prove that your children are part of a church and you need this, uh, this certificate or this, this list to say, oh, here we are, we're on this list and therefore we're attending this church and we can be admitted to this school that has a requirement that you're a part of a church. So you don't join a church by being added to a list. You know, you can be part of a church even if you're not added on the list. And um, if you listen to the sermon about baptism, it causes issues there about, you know, who can be, who, who is part of the church and whether baptism adds you to a church, whether or not you can take part in communion and breaking of bread. So it's not a uh, members list. Um, and, you know, you're not added to a church by baptism with water. So we're, we're added to the church by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, not by the baptism of water. But where do people get the idea that you need to be baptized with water to be added to a church? Well, I believe they're mixing up these verses that talk about being baptized into Jesus Christ, being baptized into the body. And they mix up the fact that there, even though the church can be rightly called the body, baptism with water doesn't add you to the body and therefore it doesn't add you to the church. It's baptism by the Holy Ghost. So they're mixing up not only baptism with the Holy Ghost and baptism with water, but they're also mixing up the church and the body. So, you know, water cannot add you to a spiritual body. I mean, neither can water add you to a physical body because you can be baptized and that's not going to get your, your, you know, your carcass here sitting in this room. So, you know, water, baptism with water doesn't add you to a physical congregation and it doesn't add you to a spiritual body. And also, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't add you to a physical body because you can be saved and be part of the body but not be part of this physical gathering. And, you know, I won't turn to all the passages for sake of time, but if you look up the phrase added to the church or added to the Lord, I believe there is a difference in the Bible. There's a distinction between believers being added to the church, like in Acts 2, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And it says many believers were added to the Lord and that they should cleave unto the Lord. And that's a people joining an assembly and being baptized into Jesus Christ. So being baptized into Jesus Christ is when you're spiritually joining that body. But when you look up the phrase being added to the Lord, I think that's actually people joining a physical congregation. So what is, uh, so how do you join a church? Well, it's simply that you need to be saved and you need to be part of an assembly. Uh, that's that's, that's all, all it is. So somebody might ask, well, you know, you, obviously you have to be saved because you, you're not even saved. You're not even part of the spiritual body and the church is the body of Christ. So that's a no brainer. Um, but then when we talk about physical presence, somebody might ask the question, well, how, well, then how physically present do you have to be until you're part of that church? Because let's say the church meets once a week, but you're only coming once a month. Are you then part of that church? Or let's say a church meets multiple times a week. A church might meet three times a week and you only go once a week. Are you then part of that church because you're not there every time they meet? And I'll answer that question this way. You know, maybe that question is of little importance because like when we talked about baptism with water, if you take away the perks of 
being part of a church even giving you perks to something else you know for example giving you perks to take part in communion take part in the breaking of bread if if you don't have to be on that list or you just have to be there physically present when they do it you can take part in it then it doesn't matter how many times you go to church um, you're still part of that church because you've been part of that that gathering at that time or let's say for example you take away voting you know I don't believe in in voting I don't believe in in, in sheep you know uh, choosing what to do because remember we saw in Hebrews 13 that I have to give an account so that's why you know I don't believe in voting because if I'm responsible and I have to give an account of how the finances are used why would I then relinquish that authority to, to the authority of the majority when the majority is not going to be accountable for that you know and, and people might say well you know does that that leaves it open for people being corrupt and just using the money abusively or whatever and you're right it does open it up to that but that's why that person is is left in authority they have to answer to God for how they do it and to, to be frankly honest like if, if you know if you guys don't trust how I use the money then don't give to the church you know you don't have to give to God this way you can give to God another way if you don't trust how I keep and I spend and I use the money then it's better that you give it somewhere else in good conscience uh, so you know I'm fine with people not giving money if they don't trust how it's being used but I'm not going to then put that trust over to the majority of a church and then let's say okay we're all going to decide by majority vote how this money is used because generally the majority can be wrong I mean we're still a small group and we know each other quite well it's probably not going to happen if we had a vote now but this is why you know large churches should not be doing things by voting or majority vote <clears throat> and you know you know the school you know if you had to enroll in a school I can understand why they would need to have a church membership but if you remove that fact, if somebody could join a school without having to prove that, then how often you go to a church would be irrelevant. And it's the same uh, with legal documentation. So how many times do you have to go to a church to be part of a church? I mean, does, I mean maybe that question doesn't even need an answer because if you take away all the perks, it, it doesn't really matter. You should just be there as often as you can. And if you're there enough times for the church to recognize that you're part of the church, maybe that makes you part of the church. But maybe it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's, how, that's what I believe about that. So I don't know whether there's really an answer to that question, how many times you need to go to a church to be part of it. <clears throat>